and cloudless skies of blue through the window crack I see you and I long to run and touch the sun dear diary what else can I do growing up and longing for a friend hoping that our secret life will end in words of light written in the night my thoughts and hopes and dreams to you i send i still believe in spite of everything that people really are good at heart and the skies will be bright and it will all come right and the springtime of peace will start dreaming of the precious air of freedom waking and i feel like crying there's no place to go but still I know skies are clearing, birds are flying. Happiness and love that I can share in a world of truth and beauty. When the thunder's near and when I fear the light of morning dawn will come. still believe in spite of everything that people really are good at heart and the skies will be bright and it will all come right and the springtime of peace will start and the skies will be bright and it will all come right and the springtime of peace will start. Hi, I'm Reverend Annie Gonzalez Milliken, the Minister of Faith Development at First Parish in Bedford, and I'm welcoming you to this virtual commemoration of Kristallnacht. Usually we would be gathered on the Bedford Common, hosted by the Bedford Interfaith Clergy Network, but it's different to this time, as so many things have been different this year. With the clergy from around Bedford and clergy from nearby Burlington as well, and also with residents of the area, we're coming together from our di different places of worship and other locations to commemorate this night, to remember the past, honor those who came before, and recommit to creating the world of love and liberation that we know can be. This message and this mission is ever more important this year than it has ever been. Our task tonight is to remember well and vow not to repeat history. This is the 79th anniversary of Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, when in Germany on that night in 1938, Nazi stormtroopers disguised in plain clothes broke Jewish shop windows, desecrated temples, and sowed the fear that they would produce the Holocaust. We are all too cognizant of how easy it is to become the victim of hatred, prejudice, and oppression. During Kristallnacht, 7,500 Jewish businesses were destroyed, 275 synagogues were razed or burned, and 30,000 Jews were arrested. 100 Jews died. The majority of those who were arrested were sent to the German concentration camps and were murdered. Out of the horrors of the Holocaust, the term crime against humanity was coined. 
during that dark era, the evil against our own humankind was ruthless in scope, methodical in execution, and perfectly calculated in its devastation. As such, tonight's commemoration of Kristallnacht must be viewed as both a memorial, a warning, and a promise. Kristallnacht occurred a mere four decades ago, but the same forces within human beings which caused that level of hatred, bigotry, and prejudice to occur at that time is still very much part of the human condition. We've seen it in our country over the past four years at an alarming rate, the anti-Semitism, the hatred against people of color, the hatred against people of other races and religions and sexual orientations. And so the lesson of Kristallnacht for us on this occasion is that it didn't just happen that once, it can happen again unless we are very, very vigilant to make sure that we shine a light on hatred wherever we find it so that the forces of good can prevail. As we remember this night, the words of the ancient psalmist echo in our hearts. I have become like a broken vessel. I am poured out like water. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. We pause this night, wherever we may be, to light a candle, in our windows and in our hearts. The light we kindle in the midst of darkness is our promise to keep alive the memory of those who were murdered on Kristallnacht and all those whose lives were filled with terror in an instant. The light we kindle tonight is our courage to stand against anti-Semitism and every kind of racial and religious hatred our courage to name ignorance and call out hatred, even among those whom we love. The light we kindle is our commitment to be the generation who dismantles spaces for hate, which allow crystal knocks to occur. Light by light, heart by heart, day by day, we carry the memory, we summon the courage, we honor the commitment to be healers of division, repairers of the breach, and instruments of peace. Amen. In the years since the Holocaust, historians recorded many survivors' personal stories. Here is an excerpt from the Graz College Holocaust Oral History Archive. Inga Karl was born in Essen, Germany in 1926 and emigrated to the United States in 1939. She says, as you may know from newsreels, the Nazis had terrific propaganda. They had a lot of pageantry and flags and banners and the youth organizations had nice uniforms. On the one hand, I knew that they were persecuting the Jews. On the other hand, it was all so appealing that I was really very sad that I could not belong to the Nazi youth organization and that I couldn't take part in the parades and in the pageantry and the ceremonies. The propaganda was so great and so glamorous and so attractive like all the children's stories being published about the wonderful things they did at these youth camps, that if you were indoctrinated by this, even as a Jewish child, that I think if I hadn't been Jewish, I am sure that I would have joined. Today I will be offering a prayer for social justice from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who created us in your own image. Grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom. Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations. To the glory of your holy name. Amen.
Martin Niemöller was an ardent nationalist and prominent Protestant pastor who emerged as an outspoken public foe of Adolf Hitler and spent the last seven years of Nazi rule in concentration camps. Niemöller is per perhaps best remembered for this poem. In Germany, first they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Thank you. Thank you to the members of the Interfaith Council for allowing me, the Interfaith Clergy, for allowing me the opportunity to speak with you on this commemoration of Crystal Night, the night of broken glass, the night that began the Holocaust and the horrors for Jewish people, for gay and lesbian people, and for other people uh, in Germany more than 60 years ago. This is the eighth time that you've allowed me to speak with you to share thoughts about Kristallnacht. And over the last few years, you know that I have voiced concerns that our country was showing signs that we may have been receptive to an authoritarian form of rule. You know, we talked about, and I'll say it again, that I grew up frightened that a, a, a civilized society such as Germany in the 1930s would allow itself to fall prey to a leader, a populist leader, who would cross so many lines and end up as the leader of a country that committed the atrocities of that time. But we just emerged from an election. We just emerged from time, a time where we as Americans gathered together in record numbers across this country, people voted in record numbers because people knew that the time to stand was now. The, people, the time to get to a polling station, the time to cast a, uh, an absentee ballot or to early vote was now. And that every single vote counted and it mattered. And that was illustrated during the week that followed the election when we watched vote by vote being counted uh, as absentee ballots uh, as early ballots in places like Pennsylvania and Arizona and Georgia and uh, Nevada. Every single vote counted and we saw that illustration of that happening before our eyes on the news channels. You did this. You stood up to a government that you did not agree with and your voice was heard. And that was so important. You did what was, was not done in the past. You took the opportunity that you had. You realized that others were not able to stand up and stop the direction of, of uh, those leaders that were acting in a way that appalled you. You knew that on election day, the people of this country would have the opportunity to put a stop to this, and you did. Now there's work ahead, because this country is a divided country. Frankly, there are those that look inward, in, in the words of Francis Niemöller. They realized that, no, the government wasn't coming for them, and so they did not take the same action. And going forward, the division in this country, it's not going to heal itself overnight. But we have the opportunity now to work together to repair some of that damage, to what, go into the future together, because united we stand. And we can do this. We have that light that's come out to guide us. And we can go into that, in, into the light, out of the darkness, and be in this together. So folks, really, I congratulate all of you who stood up for our community. You know, this country stands for something. This country is a land of opportunity for everyone, no matter where you come from, no matter the color of your skin, no matter how you worship, no matter uh, who you love. This is what our country is. It's an idea. It's an experiment. It's more than the land that we walk on. You defended that country. I'm proud of that. I know that we're a great country because of it, and I know that we have a great future because of it. So thank you for that. And we will never forget 
the lessons that of Kristallnacht, of the Holocaust, and of that time. Thank you. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, O oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, O oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O oh my soul. This is a reading by Rabbis Sylvan Kamens and Jack Reimer from Gates of Prayer by R.B. Gittleson. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them time if there are names of those you would like us to keep in our hearts and our minds those who perished during the holocaust uh those who have died whose names you would like us to to you'd like to raise up for us to all keep in mind um i'm going to look around the room and may say their names aloud So we continue now with the Kaddish prayer, which is a prayer written actually in Aramaic, which it's a prayer praising life, a prayer of hope for those 
in, in memory of those who have passed away. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shmei raba v'yalma divrach hirute v'yamlich malchute v'chaye chon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shmei raba mevarach l'olam u'olmei amaya Yit Barach, Viet Tabach, Viet Paar, Viet Romam, Viet Nase, Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shme de Kudisha, Barichu, Laela, Minkol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechamata, Da Amiran, Bialma, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shlama Raba, Min Shmaya, Vichayim, Alenu, Vel Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O say shalom bim ramav, hu ya say shalom, aleinu ve'al kol yisrael v'imru, amen. May the one who creates harmony and high bring peace to us, to all Israel, to all the world, to our country in particular, to which we say, amen. From Elie Wiesel we learn, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. We'll close by making a wish for peace tonight as we each breathe our own wishes now into our flames, together we spread our light in the darkness. Look around at all the hope and solidarity. This is the opposite of indifference. This is love and respect made visible. Let us join our hearts in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, we may call you by different names, but you have brought us together this night to remember, to grieve, to cry out at the injustices of the past and present. Yet you remind us not to give in to despair or hopelessness, but to find strength and hope in each other and in our faith in you. Send us out now in courage and in peace to do justice and to live in love, remembering that we are stronger together. Amen. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God our Creator. Peacemakers we will be. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now with every step i take let this be my solemn vow to take each moment, live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it be in with me. in our hearts and bring it out into the world. Shalom. Shalom.